What is going on right today? We are reviewing the ringside exclusive WWE Elite from the Vault Series number one. And this is going to be a very big review. You guys can see we're going to break down the entire wave all in one video. So this is going to be a very long one. I hope you guys go ahead and leave a like. Leave a like on the video, man, because this one is going to be a long one, I'm sure. But we're going to be breaking down the entire Series one of from the Vault. Very controversial set in some ways from a tale, but I feel like the overall majority of people did really like this idea, and I am on board with that. I think this is genius for business. I think this is genius for new collectors. And I think it's just, I think we all win, man. I think we all are winners when stuff like this comes out. And this entire set just gives me massive nostalgia. But if you guys want to pick these up, you can go over to Ringside Collectibles. They are Ringside Exclusive, but you guys can see through the wave. We have the Elite 45 Dudley Boys, the Ringside Exclusive Hardcore Kane, the Defining Moments Undertaker, Elite 7 Shawn Michaels and Triple H, Defining Moments John Cena, and Hall of Champions Target Exclusive Ultimate Warrior, all being re-released here in this From the Vault series, which is previously released, highly sought after, WWE Elite Figures from Mattel, being re-released with updated head sculpts, technology, double-jointed pinless arms, and other things to add but let's break down the entire wave first up man we do have one half of the Dudley boys we have Devon which is a beautiful looking figure look at this packaging man it's so cool because it's shades of old with shades of new the packaging is definitely smaller than the old packaging that Mattel had in 2010 but it is a throwback to the 2010 packaging these graphics this images the text the elite collection logo all of this just looks so damn good I am very happy with this this just is so nostalgic even these shadows or silhouettes here so celebrate the history of these WWE Legends. Does every figure have to be a legend? I don't know. But we do have Devon Dudley, originally released in Elite 45. Next up is Bubba Ray, who was also a part of Elite 45. It feels like yesterday I found that damn wave at my Toys R Us, rest in peace. But here is Bubba Ray to go with our Devon Dudley. Again, man, this packaging is so damn beautiful, man. Oh my god. We also have the ringside exclusive Hardcore Kane with the Hardcore Championship. A championship that we don't really get a lot, but this figure looks so good in this packaging. I love the way that Kane looks here. And all these figures are not perfect by any stretch which we're going to get into but we do have Kane as a former ringside exclusive and now he's getting another ringside exclusive treatment in this exact garb. Next up we have the Undertaker which is the Batwing style Undertaker really liking this head sculpt it does look very good I like the way everything looks here man this is just, I can't get over I know I've said it quite a few times already but I cannot get over this packaging it just is so nostalgic it hits you right in the feels and I feel like I'm unboxing Elite Series 1 or something like that but getting into the other half of the wave we do have Elite 7 Sean which is the only figure from this entire From the Vault set that I have never owned before. I've never owned the Elite 7 Sean, so that's the only figure, again, that I've never owned originally. The rest of these, I have had their original forms, or I found them, or I've located them in some way. Elite 7 Sean has always evaded me. It's complete here. Jersey, glow sticks, all that stuff. This one I am possibly most excited for, and at the end of the video, we are going to rank this set from my favorite, or my least favorite, or from worst to best in terms of that, so stay tuned to the end of the video for that. And we also have the other half of Triple H. A lot of people dragging this figure which we will have to see once we get into it but I feel like I'm holding Elite 7 <laughs> Triple H in my hands it's crazy and then we do have the goat here which is a figure that a lot of people like and I think this original figure is definitely one of my favorite Mattels of all time I most definitely need to make a top 10 WWE Mattel Elite figures list of all time you know give you guys my personal list of top 10s it's just so difficult it's something I would have to spend a lot of time on so maybe we can make that video happen but we have Raw Draft John Cena which always is beautiful for me I oh god this is this is my guy right here, man. And last but not least, we have the Ultimate Warrior with all of his stuff going on, which was a Hall of Champions figure. Very hard to find. I never found this figure at retail. I had to go aftermarket and spend a fortune on this figure, so I am glad to finally have an updated version of this, even though I didn't have to pay the crazy price for it, which is kind of what this wave in line is all about. But anyways, that wraps up our packaging for our From the Vault Series 1 from Ringside Collectibles. Again, if you guys want to pre-order these, grab these, go get them right now. Use code MD toys to save yourselves 10%. Huge shout out to Ringside Collectibles for making the review possible. But with that being said, let's crack all eight of these gentlemen out of their packaging and find out what the hell this From the Vault Series 1 is all about. Oh my god, that's so heavy. So here's our first look at the From the Vault Series number one out of all of their packaging. All re-releases. All, every single last one of them. All of them re-releases from left to right. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at them just like they are. We're going to start with Devon over there and we're going to go all the way across, look at all the accessories, look at the figures in detail, look at the comparisons, break it all down and get it all the way down to the Ultimate Warrior down there. This one's going to be a long one, man. Jesus Christ. Buckle the hell up and let's get into Devon Dudley's accessories and then we'll take a look at him himself and then we'll work 
work our way through our entire From the Vault series number one. So getting into Devon Dudley's accessories, we get the exact same things that we got with the original, except back then we did not have interchangeable hands. I think interchangeable hands started in Elite Series 63 officially, but before that, I think it was the SummerSlam Matt Hardy figure that first had interchangeable hands. If you didn't know that, well now you know. The V1 Matt Hardy was the first WWE Elite with interchangeable hands, I believe. I do, if my memory serves me correctly. But we do have this breakaway table. It's got the WWE logo on here. I hate the Mattel tables. I think the ringside exclusive ones are much better with the grain in them. But it is a flat table. You could use it for different things and at least, I mean, even, I think a brown table would have been better. But this is what the original Elite 45 came with. But you can put a mother sucker through it. You know what I'm saying? You can put them through there, load them up. 3D, break away, and there you go. So, yeah, I, I, you have to include the tables. You have to include the tables. Even if we did get it originally, I'm glad they included it again. Now, he also comes with two pairs of goggles, and I never understood this. I think the, like, the frames are a little bit different. You can see, like, the nose bridge is a little different. I don't like this. I don't think this is necessarily a good accessory, to be honest. But, uh, you know, you can look at them. I think, you know, you got like wider eyes right there, which looks pretty solid. And then when you move on to the other ones, you know, you get in there and, uh, you know, it's a little bit less of a gap, I think, which I, I don't know. I, get, I don't know. I, not my favorite. Just pick one pair. I don't think we needed both pair, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you disagree. You could let me know. But yeah, you do get two pairs of gl goggles or glasses there that they brought to the ring. And then outside of that, we do get the mic holding hands with the white finger tape. And then you get fisted hands with white finger tape to beat the hell out of people. So getting into Devon Dudley, same exact head sculpt. It may have a little bit difference of a likeness and springing them in here. I mean, they are a little bit different. Low key, kind of like the OG a little bit better. I'm not entirely sure there, but I always felt like they made his figure too small. I think this torso is too small. I remember when people were using this for Pinta and stuff, but it says Dudley 3D, get the tables. And he does have his tattoos on there. I like the arms and shoulders. I don't have an issue with that whatsoever. I just think the torso is too small. I don't know. That's just how I feel about it. I think it looks too small, man. I don't, I don't care. You got Dudley boys on the back there. You do have the red, black, and white camo that looks very sweet. I like the belt buckle detail there. I think that's a really underrated look there. White wrist tape, white finger tape, which always looks good. And this is all the same molds we've seen before. And on the right boot, he has nothing but the stripe on the back. And then on the other side, he has the 3D, which is in like a cream color. It's not white. It is a cream color, but that is our Devon Dudley Elite. And I love the necklace too. Forgot to mention that. So for Bubba Ray's accessories, you pretty much get the exact same things we saw with Devon, except you get one extra pair of interchangeable hands and the glass glasses are a different color. Now we don't need to go over this as you just saw this is the exact same table that you get with Devon but it is cool that you get one with each. So you get multiple tables. Still wish it had wood grain. Still wish it was brown. And much like the goggles you get with the Devon you have one set that are slightly bigger and then you have the other one. So you can pick your poison. I still don't think anybody got that reference on the original video when I talked about the pick your poison. But if anybody gets the PYP pick your poison reference you're a go. But there is Bubba Ray with the one option of goggles on which I think fits pretty well. At least they hug the head sculpt well and they're not garbage, you know? These have stood the test of time, I think. You just gotta be careful. These, I don't like as much. They're a bit wide. I don't know. It's like they don't grip the head as much. Yeah, I definitely prefer these that we just took off. But yeah, you do get two goggle options. And then for interchangeable hands, you do get the weapon wielding slash mic holding style hands in the Bubble Ray skin tone. Oh, I must have mixed these up. Hold up. Okay, so you get the mic holding hands. Then you get the C-grips or the, the wider style or the choke slamming style. And I'm pretty sure his original Elite came with choke slamming hands for some reason but you do get slightly wider gripping hands and then you guessed it he comes with fists to beat the hell out of people and then for Bubba Ray I think that the head sculpt turned out pretty good I think it looks much better than his original and if we bring him in for a head sculpt comparison yeah dude it's not even close the new one definitely looks more realistic it's got a much better likeness I like the realistic tones in there but everything else other than that I mean it's pretty much the exact same the torso the arms you have the tattoo there on the left side he does have the black and white wrist tape which looks good lower forearm tattoo. I like the arms again on here. I mean, he would be one of those guys that would benefit from those arms. We always talk about that medium, chunkier mold instead of the ultra shredded arms that they give these guys. But on the back, it does say Dudley 3D. Get the tables much like Devon, but Devon was on the front. And then he does have his camo pants all the way down. And I think these guys share the exact same leg mold, but on the right side, he has the 3D in the cream style color with the stripe down the middle. And that looks pretty good. I always like their boots. They underrated attires were the Dudley boys. But in terms of your figure comparisons, we have the original Elite 45 over here and the updated from the vault series over here. And these had the damn, or the Devon had the rotation new joints that I hated back in the day 
Ray the single jointed, and then Bubba Ray also had single jointed arms way before they had their double jointed arms here. But this red is a lot more saturated between the two. You can't really tell on camera, but this is a little bit light compared to this. This is much more saturated, which I like. I think these are definite upgrades, man. If you already have these, I mean, I guess if you don't care for the articulation or whatever, just keep these. But the lightness is certainly better here. I think I like this head sculpt better for Devon compared to the new one. But, you know, it is what it is. I, I, I like the comparisons here. And these were a perfect addition to the From the Vault series. I, I have to say this in the review. This first series of From the Vault series 1, they knocked it out of the park with every selection. I might have a slight disagreement on one selection, which we'll get into in the ranking. But for the most part, they nailed it in this set. For our Hardcore Kane accessories, we do get the coveted Hardcore Championship. Now, this is a championship that I always loved as a kid, and I do wish they had more details. I think doing a dark wash and doing some paint on there, I think I've even sold and showed off some custom Hardcore Championships I've made where I've painted it and added different details to it. But I am always happy to add a Hardcore Championship to the collection. One of my favorite championships growing up, it was so fun. Kind of expired the entire Extreme Division you saw on MDT PickFed television. You know, the 24-7 rule and the running around just getting hit in the head with different stuff and the wackiness of it and it wasn't lame or cringy it was just I mean don't get me wrong some parts of it were goofy as hell but I think it had a real edge to it and I like that but the hardcore championship always looks great I love how it just looked like it was a falling apart piece of mess held together with duct tape and I think they brought that to life here now one thing I don't like about the Kane figure is they didn't give him the gloved hands man like even this hand it's the Johnny Gargano adjusted ricochet Kawhi Leonard entrance hand for the choke slamming hand or the you know winding up the choke slam or even putting the glove on they didn't do the Ultimate Edition glove or the or truth glove that they give his figures. They gave him the damn Ricochet Kawhi Leonard hand, which I think is lame, and he doesn't even have a choke slamming hand. It's just regular mic holding hands. So you get the black side, which is just this hand molded in black instead of an actual sculpted glove, which I think is lame. But it does have the black peg. And then you get your wind up choke slamming hands or your kind of, you know, this should have been a gloved hand, man. I don't like that they went with this. It's just the same hand molded in black. Hate to see it. And then we're getting into the Kane figure, which I like this mask sculpted it looks to be the Ultimate Edition version, just repainted, and it looks very good. This looks so much better than that damn basic I hate that looks like soiled at SpongeBob. If you guys missed my worst figure head sculpts of all time, you need to check that out. But they kind of did what I did with my original fix-up, which we'll see in the comparison shot of the video, which was switch out the arms, make them bigger. They used to have them long and lean and skinny. But one thing I noticed is that the pellets or the divots or whatever the hell, and my mind's gone blank, but the studs is what I should say. The studs down here on the gauntlet are painted black. I don't think that's accurate, but I certainly like the new addition of upgraded arms and everything. And the orange on the trunks or on the torso look a lot more saturated as well. I still think this torso is too small for Kane, but I know we're reimagining an existing figure, so it doesn't bother me that much. I'd also like to see a sculpted belt instead of painted on, but he does have the Kane wrist gauntlet over here to go with his black hand mold, even though it's not sculpted. Do a glove, which bothers me, but he does have his flames all the way around as well. Man, that original hardcore Kane was a beast, but he's got the tall black boots. Now, this is going to be an interesting comparison. On the left, this is the original ringside exclusive hardcore cane. The gauntlet is actually painted, not on the right side, but on the left, and then it's vice versa here. So the gauntlet on this one is painted accurately, and then it's flipped on the other, but the oranges are definitely more saturated here, but I like this arm mold. I like how jacked I made this cane. This, this era of cane from like 2000, 2001 was super jacked, man, and I think this one definitely captures it. I know these are single jointed, but now now we kind of have that upgrade here, and this is how he looked in the Fed for a while, and I did get, this is a custom head sculpt. Before we got the Attitude Era Ring Kane Ultimate Edition, this head sculpt was commissioned by me using one of my Ultimate Edition Kane head sculpts, the prom hair, the slick back hair here. I commissioned that from BEW, and I had that extra head, so I plopped it onto this hardcore cane, and so I've had this as a placeholder for a long time, so them releasing this isn't the biggest deal. I'm glad to have it, and I think it's a good addition, but I was pretty satisfied with my original figure here. I know it's not the original as it came, but you guys know that I'm constantly fixing up my figures to make them better and more accurate. And look at that. I mean, they essentially took this figure and released it for sure, but with double jointed arms. And that's just crazy. I honestly still like how Jack this looks compared to this one, but it is an interesting comparison nonetheless. So Defining Moments Undertaker with the big old wings on the back. Very, very clutch Undertaker added to the From the Vault Series 1 here. And it's pretty cool, the accessories you get here. Let's start off with this because it kind of ties into the bat wings. This is a rubber in entrance shirt that clasps in the front. It's got the fringe on the front there and it does clasp as you guys can see there underneath. It has little buttons there. You can clasp that together and then it has the fringe on the bottom which is also cool. But it's kind of this matte black color there and it has these ports on the back which 
I'll get into the hands in just a moment. And the ports on the back of the entrance jacket plug into these here. So when you put this on the figure, you can port the wings onto the back and then it creates that bat-like entrance or what have you. But this reminds me a lot of Batman. I mean, these are giant wings. You can have these coming out there, which I think is awesome. It's a great accessory from Mattel. Cloth goods feel really good in hand and they're very quality, very quality wings, which I like. And they, they I don't know, they pose well. I like them. I think they look pretty damn good. So very Batman-like, but I like the little apparatus they've built here for this Undertaker. I don't know if this is the exact same way it was built in the past. I'm sure it is, but I don't I don't have a confirmation. I think when I've owned this figure, I never got the bat wings with it or these wings with it. So that's that's one thing. But yeah, you do get these really cool wings with this Undertaker. So I feel I like this. I like this a lot. But in terms of interchangeable hands, you get the mic holding hands. Unlike Kane, he actually comes with choke slamming hands. So you do get choke slamming hands with your Undertaker. I guess you could use this as a choke slamming hand for your cane if you wanted to. And last but certainly not least, we have the fist hands to beat the hell out of people. And getting into The Undertaker, I actually like this head sculpt, this newer head sculpt. It's definitely different from the original. I like that the, you know, the teardrop and the likeness is very menacing, and that's kind of what you want out of Undertaker. I like the hair color, how it's that kind of lighter brown that's not saturated, which I like. I don't know, he's just very menacing, and they've been killing it on The Undertakers lately, man. Every damn Undertaker we get's just a banger, it seems like, lately. But he does have this rubber shirt overthrow, and you can remove it, and it is shirtless, like, underneath here and you can see there's clasps on the sides here that you can undo and he does have like a regular elite torso it's kind of a bish to get off but you can remove that if you want better articulation that's probably the way you should go but I'm not going to do that here today I'm not going to remove that all the way off but you can remove that if you so choose but I think it's meant to be wearing this you know and it does hinder the hell out of the articulation but at least you do get double jointed arms he does have the big elbow pads on here but he does have the tattoos underneath which I like and he does have the black wrist tape in there and you know he does have the giant bat accessory or the bat wings accessory but one thing that's really awesome about this figure is this unique leg mold they've never done this since this crotch piece with all these like these baggy pants with the cross hatches just looks incredible I always like these a lot, and then he has the tall boots, and this figure was always so buttery smooth for whatever reason. The legs just posed around great. I, I like this Undertaker a lot. And then for your Undertaker figure comparisons, we have the new from the vault in the middle, and then from left to right, you have the Defining Moments Undertaker, the Ultimate Edition Undertaker, the Greatest Hits Hull of Champions re-release Undertaker, and then the Legends Target exclusive over here. Look at this. All of these are like modern releases of Undertaker with double jointed arms, and then we have the Defining Moments. I won't be shocked if they redo that Defining Moments Taker, man. It won't be shocked at the slightest, but it is cool to see these up next to each other. Rank these down below. I still think I like this one the most. I love this Legends one, but this one's damn good, man. Very damn good. Hate the head sculpt here, but that one in the middle, man. This new From the Vault Series Taker is very menacing. So for our Elite 7 Shawn Michaels or From the Vault Series Shawn Michaels, we get the original accessories you got with the Elite 7 Shawn Michaels, but he does have interchangeable hands like we've stated in this video already. But one thing that was so unique about this figure originally in Elite Series 7 was it was so damn hard to find it on the aftermarket with its accessories. I mean, that jersey practically fell apart over time. It was back when they did cloth goods differently, and you wouldn't find it with a cowboy hat and the and the glow sticks. It was a very difficult challenge, but we do have this cowboy hat. I like the sculpt on here. We have seen this in the past, but they don't really give it to us much, and it doesn't really hug the figure all that well. kind of just sits on there. It will, like, fall off. I guess it didn't right there, but it, it's definitely not on there. You know what I'm saying? It's just kind of sitting on there, and it may have a little bit of grip, I guess, but I, I kind of wish it would sink a little further. It's, it's not very very tight on there, but I do like the way it looks. Uh, yeah, I, I like the way it looks for sure. Now, outside of that, you do get some cool glow sticks here, which I like, and the fluorescent green they use on these is great. Whatever plastic they use on these are great. You get an X molded that way, so that way, you know, they, these don't come apart. This is an X, you know, for DX, and then we do have the singular ones that you can use here, which are cool. I think these are really cool accessories and something that we haven't even seen, I don't think, since this Elite Series 7 Wade. I don't think they ever redid these. To my knowledge, I don't think they ever redid these, but you get the X, and then you get two singular DX glow sticks. And then you get the DX Army jersey, which is kind of like the old Rey Mysterio style shirt or the muscle tee from Rey Mysterio or Ryback, which is the dual cutoff sleeves, but it does have the green underneath. It is the DX Army jersey. There's nothing on the back, which is kind of disappointing. I wish that it had the rest of the graphics, or maybe it was blank on the back and I'm just forgetting, but you have this nice DX logo up here with them on the tank, the DX Army on the chest. This is sick as hell. This is so great. I love this. I think they did a fantastic job on this, and it feels way higher quality than it originally came 
when this figure first released all those years ago. And then for interchangeable hands, we get mic holding hands. For some reason, we get our choke slamming hands, I guess to hold the glow sticks maybe, I'm not sure. You get the newly sculpted, shorter versions of the Ricochet Kawhi Leonard style hands. So I guess they they got sick of Ricochet Kawhi Leonard hands. They said, get those the hell up out the yard. And they said, let me get some newly sculpted hands. I think they started this in Elite 105 Johnny Gargano. And last but not least, you get the fisted hands to, again, uh, uh, who cares? So for our Elite 7 original, they did add some different things here to the head sculpt. I'm pretty sure the original was clean shaven. And I used to really like this head sculpt, but it's so dated and it doesn't look like they really applied true effects like the WrestleMania version of this head sculpt from WrestleMania 26. And I said that this head sculpt always looked like Abe Lincoln to me. It has a real Abe Lincoln likeness to me if you cover up all the different stuff. He has a little schmutz on his nose. But for the time, I guess it wasn't that bad, but it's certainly time to move on from this one. Also wish it had some chest hair in here and some stomach hair, but... But he does have his tattoo in here, which is a bit saturated. The DX Army armbands, which look great, which I think really throw the figure over the top because it ties into the thigh, like thigh wrap right there or the thigh band that's painted on. But the camo pants are so slick. You know, we begged Mattel for years for long pants Shawn Michaels. We finally got them. And I love the coloration with the orange, the brownish orange with the white, black, and green. Looks so sweet. And then again, you throw in that fluorescent green or that neon green on the wrist tape or on the wristbands. These were sweatbands, which how cool would it have been if they did sculpt? sculpted sweatbands like from John Cena on this figure. I think that also would throw it over the top. But uh, yeah, I, I love this figure, man. Looks great, and he even has the kick pad feet, which is always, but it's honestly surreal to even have this figure in a review because I, I wanted this figure for so damn long, and it went for such crazy astronomical prices, and now none of that's going to matter because I have an updated version, and I could give a hoot about that original. But what's funny about this comparison is I never had that figure originally, so we're going to compare some other figures, and another thing that's interesting is this figure is coming in from the Vault Series 2, which is the DX Ringside Exclusive Sean, but they switched out that head sculpt for one of the Ultimate Edition head sculpts and I can't wait for that Sean too because I think this is a great upgrade here and then this is the Walgreens exclusive Sean Michaels from back in the day and I took that original figure and I did some fix ups I switched out the head sculpt because it had the ponytail head sculpt put a custom shirt on there put on a DX backwards hat and I did a lower arm swap with a 2k15 DX battle pack Sean Michaels figure ordered that men on card off eBay just to do the swap it was very hard to find just to make this cool fix up that you see here and now that I have this I think I really would like to have have an original form DX Walgreens exclusive Sean, but I only found it one time and I had to cash in the Money in the Bank briefcase to secure that and, you know, fix it up there. But this is a long-standing custom or fix-up in the collection. I've had this for a damn long time, but I'm so damn happy to finally have this Sean in the collection in this way. It's beautiful to see. And then for the other half of DX, we have the Triple H accessories. And I've heard a lot of people talk about how big this shirt is. It's a big-ass shirt, man. It's a big t-shirt. This t-shirt's swallowing up hoes all over the street. Oh, I could have worded that better, but... Massive Tank DX flag here. I love the flag. The, the Heartbreak logo with the Iron Cross is so sick, but you have these here with the DX Tank. On the back, nothing, but then you get the DX Army on the sleeve, which I also think is great and brilliant. But this is a cool shirt. I like that they included this. And again, this isn't going to fall apart like the first version from the original. Jesus. You also get the DX Army hat, which is a very nice color and everything. I think this is actually the mold they used for the John Cena Marine hat from his WrestleMania 34 figure. And the hat looked terrible. It looked nothing like the choreography, but you slide this on here. It fits the figure well, so that's good. You know, that's pretty, that's pretty damn cool, man. He can even throw it on backwards, I guess, if you want. I think Triple H was rocking it backwards sometimes back then. You know, he's a wacky, goofy guy. Does it fit on the best backwards? You can see it kind of like lifts up a little bit, but I like the colorations and the logos. Now, the Triple H also includes the exact same glow sticks that you saw with the Shawn Michaels. You get the X-posed style that are clasped together, and then you also get the singular glow sticks, which again, look really, really good. And then for Triple H's interchangeable hands, the right hand actually has a white peg, so the wrist tape is continuous, and he also has white finger tape. He also comes with ass-kicking fisted hands to beat the hell out of people. White tape and white peg again. And I forgot to mention this with Shawn Michaels, but these are the DX Chop It hands. I was so into the Ricochet Kawhi Leonard hand mold lore that I forgot to mention why he comes with those. So yeah, it's the DX Suck It or, you know, Chop Hands. And next up, we're getting into Triple H's figure, and this is not the original head sculpt it came with. This is one of those head sculpts that I always love, but they have painted it very weird. I always thought the likeness for this, this Triple H head sculpt was amazing, and it's why you'll see it in my collection quite a bit, because I think it has a really good menacing look to him. I used to fix up the Elite 2 with this figurehead, and on my Elite 7 original, I fixed it up with this head sculpt, because I think it has the best likeness to Triple H. It's just they kind of effed it up with this weird beard that he has, and the 
the hair color is pretty accurate for the time. He had that lightish orangish red brown sort of hair going on, but the dark beard really throws it off. If this is the same color as this, or if it was lighter, or had that translucent or you know that opaque look, I think it would do a lot better, but it's so dark that it throws it off. But the likeness is uncanny. I like the likeness of the head sculpt, because the original Elite 2 and Elite 7 head sculpts that they gave Triple H were god-awful. God awful. They look dreadful. Absolutely one of my least favorite head sculpts from Mattel ever, but he does have the same giant torso. You get the white wrist tape. He has the iron crosses on the elbow pads, which I think originally they had the DX on there. I'm not entirely sure. Maybe this is accurate, but he does have the Trunks logo here with the tank and the iron cross, which I always thought was a really sweet logo. And then he does have the same on the front with the DX. And then he has the large knee pads, which suck eggs. And then he has the iron crosses on his boots here, which look cool. I feel like back in the day, we used to get so many Triple H figures. Now I feel like we don't get shish, but what do you guys think? So for your Triple H from the vault figure comparisons, here's all of our different DX Triple now this one has a custom handlebar mustache, but look at their head sculpts, man. This is the same head sculpt as this, just repainted, and this is the same head sculpt as this, just repainted. This is a custom head sculpt that I made way long ago because, again, I like this head sculpt. I really did. It's just custom painted, and then I took that Walgreens exclusive Triple H, and I put some Mojo Raleigh boots on it on surgery just for shishes and gigs. I need to fix it back. I just wanted to do it because it's a cool fix-up. I like the, the green boots just throw that figure over the top. Not accurate whatsoever, just looks cool. But then you have my original Elite 7 Triple H, which is right here, and everything is the same, except I did put this shirt on here to match my, you know, my mock-up DX Sean, and the head sculpts are, you know, they're the same, they're just painted differently, but... Essentially, they're the exact same figure to have the updated technology over here. But yeah, I hate this head sculpt. I'm definitely going to be switching that out. I love this one. I love the head sculpt, just painted dreadfully. And then, of course, it is John Cena's accessories time from the vault. And you get a slew. You do get a ton here, which is why I think a lot of people love this John Cena figure. Don't get me wrong. This is my favorite era John Cena. This is my, you know, this is, uh, of course, I love Dr. Thungonomics John Cena. And that's what made me gravitate to the character. But Chain Gang John Cena, that's for life right there. Also, being a big actor athlete and seeing him rock the jerseys and everything. Man, in elementary school, I was rocking the hell out of jerseys. I still have all of my jerseys from elementary school that I would rock to school all the damn time. Oh man, what a time to be alive. But I'm probably going to rip these apart a little bit. We do have the spinner championship that came with the Elite 100 John Cena. Not accurate. You know, it does spin here and it does. Does it not have? Yeah, it does. It does not. No John Cena on the nameplate. That would have been a cool addition, but it does spin here, but it doesn't spin well. You know, it gets very... There's a way to rig it up right there, but yeah, it's way too tight there, but it does spin. At least, it, you know, you get a little bit of something, something there. But back then, it did not have two WWE champion side plates like this. It had the Monday Night Raw. And actually, at the time of this, it may have even still had the SmackDown side plates, and they switched it after. I want to say it may have been changed to the lock with the Monday Night Raw side plate, but it may have actually had the SmackDown. I'm not entirely sure. And I know people are going to be happy to get the U.S. spinner, but I hate Mattel's U.S. spinner. It's way too tiny, man. I mean, it's way too tiny. Look at the plate differential here. I mean, this U.S. championship is very, very small. If you want to pick a better upgrade of a U.S. championship spinner for your collection. Get the Jax version. The Jax version has better strap detail, and it's better in scale, and it just looks awesome. It does spin, though, which is cool. I will give them that, but I hate the U.S. spinner. I just think it's way too small, and it just puts me off, but it does look clean. It's just not my favorite. Don't like it. Get it out of my face. And then he also comes with the basketball jersey, which doesn't have any Velcro, which is nice, and it originally didn't have Velcro on it back in the day from Mattel. But, of course, they don't own the Spirit of St. Louis logos or the Moses Malone and everything. This is supposed to be a Spirit of St. Louis Moses Malone jersey with the number 13. They could pretty much, for the most part, get it, but it does need the Spirit of St. Louis logos on there. I just don't like... This is why I don't want the fan takeover Ultimate Edition John Cena to be from WrestleMania 20, because they're not going to be able to put the New York Knicks logos or any of his logos on his armbands or Patrick Ewing on the back. They're not going to be able to do any of that, so that's why... You get figures like this, which I guess they're fine for what they are, but they're not accurate at the slightest. He didn't wear a Cena jersey, all those things. It's still badass, and I do love the Defining Moments John Cena. It's just these little details that would put it over the top. It's just that, what's the, what's the point if it's not accurate, man? I don't know, that's just my take on it. You guys can let me know. But we do get the giant white tee that goes underneath, and this has very high quality. And I remember the first version of this, these white tees that we got with the original Defining Moments. That shish just fell apart in your hand. It would have strings and stuff coming off. It was abysmal, but it's a giant white tee, and it does have Velcro on the back there. And then we get the beautiful chain gang hat. And one thing that always bothered me about this, and I know this is just the original, so it's not like they attempted it again, but not having the white under the brim here and around the edges kind of bothered me because that was kind of like a signature detail of that. 
but it is cool. I do like that they have this. It's got Chain Gang Life Sentence on the back, which is clean, and this hat does fit the figure pretty damn well, so you can sit that on there, which is always good to see. I feel like I'm reviewing a figure from 2012 or something. It's crazy. He also comes with his original Chain Gang pendant, which I love. It'd be cool to get a realistic pendant and chain like we saw from Jax back in the day, but every time we get this, it's just a mold like this we saw with the Elite 100 John Cena, but it also comes with his dog tags, which I don't think he was wearing at the time, but they are certainly there. And they did come with the original figure. And last but not least, he does come with mic holding hands. And he comes with the fisted hands. So for our From the Vault John Cena... Uh, the original head sculpt of this I actually liked. I think that it kind of takes a step backwards. I don't like the hair color. I don't like the facial expression. He just looks a bit derpy or goofy. He low-key kind of looks knockoff a little bit. I don't like this head sculpt. I think that, you know, they could have done... I know they're just true effectsing the originals, but that's not completely true because they switched out some of them, right? They did do some different things there, but I don't really feel this, man. I don't really feel it, but it does have double-jointed arms. Same John Cena torso we've seen. Would have been, again, very cool to see the sculpted on bands instead of these but I guess if you have if you have that ultimate edition multiple copies you could put them on there but what would be the use not really a point in that but he does have the black pants in there which are cool double jointed and then he has the dreadful John Cena shoe mold which he was wearing some white Reebok pumps at this time not black main color but they're just re-releasing the defining moments just ah man there really wasn't even a reason for this figure to come with a U.S. spinner, to be honest, but what do I know, Brad? Well, for this figure and its comparisons, we really just need to get into one, and that is my original Defining Moments John Cena with a custom jersey on there, and my shoes are painted more accurate, and, you know, there's different things there, but, yeah, you know, I just I wanted to have the accurate jersey and lore and stuff, so I did do that. I'm not going to remove all of this to show, because it's going to be the exact same. You can see the original arms on here, and you can see the single jointed arms in there. It's just, oh, man. Definitely an upgrade, but ha, ah, John Cena. I, I need to make that video. They have missed the mark on him. But for this video and the comparisons, you know, this is the original jersey here. And I do have multiple copies of the original version like this, but they are, they've been customized and fixed up and stuff. But there is your comparison between the original and the brand new from the vault. So for our Hall of Champions Ultimate Warrior, we do get the white strap WWF Championship, which looks so damn clean. I bet this would look so good on the Ultimate Edition Cody Rhodes, especially if it was modernized. But this is so beautiful, I'll never get old of this. I like having the white strap here. It's very clean on the figure. Very sweet. I want to say on the original figure, did it not have a yellow strap? And maybe they changed it, or maybe there was a running change on the original. I can't remember off the top of the dome. But the blue looks good on the globe. I like this a lot. And then outside of that, you don't get anything else, man. You get mic holding hands. You get mic holding hands and you already know what they come with. He comes with mic holding hands and fisted hands so he could... And we're finally getting into the last figure in this From the Vault wave, which is going to be Ultimate Warrior. And I like this head sculpt. I've always liked it. I like the hair slick back and the paint and the likeness. It looks to be the exact same head sculpt that we saw back in the day, but maybe with some true effects, which we'll take a look at if you want to compare here. Here is the Hall of Champions on the left compared to the compared to the From the Vault on the right. And it is... There's a... I don't know. I'm... Shoot. I may like the original better. I don't know. I feel like the eyes may be a bit big over here. I'm not sure, but everything else is pretty much the same. You get the jack torso, double jointed arms. He has his cool tassels and bright, saturated colors. A very underrated gear. The blue tones and everything just looks so nice. I love the greens thrown in there. He's definitely a toyetic guy in terms of colorations and different things going on. Ultimate Warrior on the butt cheeks there. But, he, I mean, he just looks like a damn superhero out here. He also has the uh, the tassels that, you know, when you run down the ramp and what have you, you can articulate them for different, you know, fast pace action there. But the knee pads look good. I like the bright yellow and black boots, which also look cool. And on this original figure, it did not have the articulated tassels. So that is an addition there. But, for, okay, so the knee pads look a little bit different there in the colors. Look at that. Maybe this is more accurate instead of the dark. I'm not entirely sure, but they definitely have their own shot. And then here's a full body side by side of the original Hall of Champions Ultimate Warrior and the From the Vault series. Pretty cool, you know, not my first choice to be selected for the for, From the Vault series, but I think it's a solid addition considering I paid like 50 or 60 loose for that Hall of Champions. Just trying to pretty much complete, you know, I'm trying to have a full complete Mattel Elite collection and I couldn't do that if I didn't buy that on the aftermarket because I couldn't find it at damn retail, which is probably why this figure's here in this entire set anyway. So it is finally time to rank this set from my least favorite or the one that I don't value as high as the rest of them in my collection. Like ones that, I guess my criteria is the same. It's excitement level for the figure, it's need, it's want, it's excitement, all those different things wrapped up into one. We've already seen all these things beforehand, but 
let's get into it, man. Starting out at the bottom of my ranking, I went with the Hall of Champions Ultimate Warrior. It's just the one that I would want the least because, again, I already paid that aftermarket price. I don't care if it has double jointed arms, you know, things like that. So for me, the Ultimate Warrior comes in at the bottom. It's just not a bad figure. I like the figure. I love the coloration. It may even be the best attire for Ultimate Warrior in figure form from Mattel, possibly. It just comes in at the bottom for me. The next one is going to be the John Cena. Now, I know a lot of people that are not massive John Cena fans like me probably will have that figure higher, which kind of sounds counterproductive. I don't know, man. It's just, uh, I don't know. There's, I just see so many things with it that I just don't like that much, even though I think that it is a good selection and a cool selection. But I don't know. I guess it's just because I, I am such a big Cena guy. But next up, we are going with the Triple H figure. Just not the most exciting of all time, right? And if I didn't already have that Elite 7 Triple H and fixed it up and did some different things, I would probably feel differently about it. And again, I guess that's kind of where you know, this ranking kind of falls in line. So Triple H is next on the list. Next up, we have the Devon out of the set. I think the original Devon head sculpt is better than this one, but I do like the addition of the double-jointed arms. I just think he's a bit undersized and things like that that kind of bring him down some. Next up is going to be the Kane figure. You know, I looked at it. You saw my comparison with my own Kane, my own collection, and it pretty much looks like this figure through and through. I don't think that I necessarily needed this, but I am excited for it to have it officially released from Mattel and all those things. Number three is going to be Bubba Ray. I like the Bubba Ray because I like the updated head sculpt a lot, and I like having a Bubba Ray for the double-jointed arms. Now, one thing is, I guess it's not as bad. It's not as bad. I was going to say he may have that Eric Rowan syndrome, which is a whole other syndrome that I've never really broken down, but he doesn't. He doesn't have Eric Rowan syndrome, and I like the head sculpt, so I went with Bubba Ray Dudley at three. At number two, I went with The Undertaker. I like this figure a lot. I love how damn menacing the head sculpt is. I think the head could probably sit a little lower, but... This this figure feels so buttery smooth. I like the extra accessories. Head sculpt looks phenomenal. Yeah, great for the phenom, right? And then number one has to be the Shawn Michaels. This has been on my wants list for so many years. It had to come in at the number one spot. No other figure could place it. Finally having this in my collection, finding it like finally having it complete with all the bells and whistles, that Sean had to come in at number one. But that is my complete ranking of From the Vault Series 1, and it breaks down my entire review of this entire set. I was going to do it and break it down video by video, but I figured let's give them a long review. Buckle the hell up. You can find which figure you want to see, and, you know, just take a look at everything in its entirety, man. But that is pretty much going to wrap up our review of Series 1 of From the Vault. Now, the next set that we get of From the Vault, maybe I will do them in their separate reviews, but because I got this later than everybody and I didn't get the video up in time, I did have to settle for doing the full set in one, and hopefully you guys enjoyed that anyways, but that is going to wrap it up, man. Thank you guys so very much for watching at the end of the day, but I think we all are winners with the From the Vault set, and I think it's a fantastic business model. It's a fantastic idea because you can catch up on all these figures, and a lot of these are which I love to see upgraded. So, you know, you're taking these old figures that have single jointed arms, giving them double jointed arms, fixing them up in different ways, and re-releasing them for lesser than they go for in the aftermarket, and the aftermarket prices of the originals aren't necessarily on par because they're outdated. They're, you know, the technology, the single jointed arms, all those things. So you're kind of paying for that price to get that and all those different things, but nonetheless, man, at the end of the day, I would like to know where you guys stand on all these figures down in the comment section below. Let me know what you think of From the Vault Series 1. Did you grab them all? Did you grab some? It's a great way to update your collections if you're missing. Like, right, if you have the original Defining Moment Cena, but you don't have the original Hardcore Ringside Exclusive Kane, well then you can, you know, you can pick and choose which ones you want to fill those holes for the originals and keep the originals if you already have them. And if not, you can buy them and sell your original for, you know, a fraction of the price or whatever the case is. So, that's just, you know, PYP, pick your poison. But nonetheless, huge shout out to our Patreon members of the MDT YouTube channel, man. I appreciate all you fellas up there. You guys are absolutely goaded, man. Thank you guys so very much for all that you guys do on a daily basis. I appreciate all of the support. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok on My Damn Toys. I'm seeing you guys later. Have a blessed one. I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.